So, last time we saw that we have we drew these pictures for SO3 and SU2. <coughs> and the pictures were that SO3 is a ball of radius pi. And psychologically, we can draw SU2 of double the size, although remember there is really no size in this space. And these are the directions tau x, tau y, tau z <coughs> or tau 1, tau 2, tau 3 I think, but whatever. So, this uh, and you can erect your n cap here or somewhere here wherever and the expressions here were exponent of uh, if you put j, then you put i also, i n cap theta, uh, n cap dot j times theta. Okay, so <coughs> e raised to i theta n cap dot j. Uh, so, this always reminds me of Euler's theorem that <coughs> every rotation is ultimately a rotation about some one axis. So, there is an n cap. So, you can do all kinds of rotations, but the beginning position and the final one are always connected by a single rotation, which is a rotation about one axis composition of any rotations is a net rotation theta times n cap dot j. So, n cap is the axis of rotation, theta is the angle of rotation. So, totally there are exactly three parameters uh, connecting any one orientation of body to any other, even when it has gone through all kinds of complication in complicated paths. <coughs> so, this is what I would like to call oil, it is part of the Euler's theorem. And we saw that this theta goes from theta belongs to and let us write it as uh, 0 to pi. Okay. And there is the whole question, so it is 0 to pi like this, <coughs> but we will say more about that uh, in a little bit. On this side, we have exponent i times theta times, uh, oh god, theta times n cap times tau, n cap dot tau by 2. So, either you put 2 under the theta, which is often done, but to remind you that in group theory sense, it is tau by 2, which is the generator, you, sh you should put half there, but the net consequence is the same. The So, this is u of u n cap of theta and this is what we called r n cap of theta rotation that is u n cap of theta. And the interesting point is that u any n cap 
of 2 pi becomes equal to minus 1, because this has expansion cos theta by 2 plus i n cap dot theta sigma times sin theta by 2. So, when theta becomes equal to 2 pi, you get cosine of pi. So, you get a minus sign in front of the identity matrix and whereas, here uh, at you get either plus pi or if you flip the n cap to minus n cap, you are basically doing the opposite rotation. So, you cover the distance from minus pi to pi by choosing the n cap appropriately but it never reaches mi minus 1 it does so okay so the outermost uh, point of this <coughs> are all independent but the opposite points are identified so now we are coming to the topology part of it which is that so in so3 we uh, at theta equal to pi we can take i will just leave the this side for su2 statements we can let theta go from 0 to 2 pi but then n cap pointing in only half of the hemisphere are required in one hemisphere suffice right this is an important statement this is the important statement so suppose i take the hemisphere corresponding to the upper upper bowl which is uh, right so the one defined by jx jy plane And suppose we take only all the end caps pointing in this and not go below, but we go 0 to 2 pi, then we have covered all the rotations or we can go 0 to pi and then take minus end cap as well opposite the all of the end caps, but then only restrict ourselves to go from uh, 0 to, so sorry either I take one hemisphere and 0 to 2 pi all of the possible rotations. So, I come back to the original, but then there is no point taking the other side because the same uh, orientation I can obtain by doing the larger rotation here or I restrict myself to <coughs> or let n cap vary over all angles, all directions, but restrict theta to be belong to 0 to pi and now I will draw a dotted line here. The point is that if I do a pi rotation, uh, so if I do a pi rotation about this direction, so let us look at this diagram. If I do a pi rotation, I reach this point. So, as you know in this diagram, theta is the magnitude that by which you scale this n cap vector, because theta multiplies the n cap vector. So, theta is the magnitude of the vector. So, the amount of rotation is given by the magnitude. So, when I reach here, I have rotated by exactly pi. So, I have read the, I have done this rotation, but to go to further you know greater than pi, I am supposed to now start the other way and reach that point by using minus n cap. So, I can reach this point, but if I now start off with the opposite direction n cap minus n cap, then I will be double counting if I reach the opposite this point.
so n cap are unit vectors and the amount of rotation is how far you go in this okay so this is theta now let us draw a physical space picture let us take a cube let us say a cube is uh, i don't know whether what to take actually not a cube cube is not a good idea so suppose you take a slightly uneven shape and you rotate by pi then this point comes here and you get the you know the corresponding opposite shape if you want to rotate further so this is pi rotation if you want to rotate further either you can keep rotating further up to 2 pi which is this choice or you can say if you want to reach so suppose this is a you know some p vector p suppose i want p to be here p to reach here i can either rotate by this this way or i can now start rotating in the opposite direction which so i should have this is what i should have emphasized the theta rotation is always entirely counter clockwise looking down on n cap okay that's our usual convention so with that convention if you now want to reach this you can also reach it so either by rotating counter clockwise this way or by taking minus n cap and rotating counter clockwise this way so you can reach this point in so3 in two different ways either like this or like this so this is the case 1 and this corresponds to this choice the lower choice sorry okay. where you let n cap go only over, go over all direction so here you choose this happens using minus n cap minus n cap and counter clockwise from looking from below so either i use minus n cap but then i have to restrict to 0 to pi only because this reaches up to here and this minus n cap can reach up to that so i have to restrict my rotation angles to theta to pi and the point is that the actual point pi is double counted in this method because either you can reach it by pi rotation by n cap or by pi rotation by minus n cap therefore in this picture these two points the antipodal points on the surface are actually one and the same but they are not they are different but this point is distinct from say this point so this point has an antipodal point here so this point is same as this point this point is same as this point so now <coughs> the space of so3 rotations is the set of points which are inside this ball some n cap some size theta and when you reach the boundary of the ball you can increase include only half of the surface of the ball because the antipodal points are already uh, are have to be excluded on the outer surface so so3 so with this is the standard choice but of course the topology will remain same even if you that we can argue separately so if you make the standard choice then so3 is the manifold which is essentially a continuum set which can be in one to one correspondence with r3 is the manifold of all points all the points inside the ball so we avoid the word sphere because sphere sometimes means only the shell so to be specific mathematicians call the full filled sphere the ball so all the points inside the ball of radius pi with n 
antipodal points on the surface identified, mutually identified. This is the key fact about SO3. Now, you can also as a exercise in thinking, think of the other convention, where you take the upper convention. I will let n caps be only in the upper hemisphere, but I will go, I will let my sphere go to size 2 pi instead of pi. If I do this, then again I have going up to 2 pi, but then the outermost points are all included now, except that on the uh, the circle, the great circle on the hemisphere, I can take only half of the points, because again the antipodal points are there. So, remember that when I take this <coughs> and when we said we identified antipodal points, it means that I have to leave out the outermost peel or outermost shell of this lower half out. Not only that, on the equator, I can take only half of the equator. Not only that, I can only take the semi closed equator, include the point 0, but leave out the point pi, because pi and 0 are also identified. So, it is a slightly strange manifold, in which the outer surface is uh, only half of it is there. But, <coughs> the rotations that are about along this direction remain independent of rotations around this direction, because when I reach pi by using this axis, it is different from having reached pi by using some other axis. The, as a, so, the configuration may look similar, but you can never actually continuously deform this pi rotation to that pi rotation. So, they are actually, although antipodal points are identified, this point remains distinct from that point. So, suppose we call this A and B and A prime and B prime. So, A prime and B prime, I will write over here. Uh, here, I have not been so careful. So, let us put it again. So, let us say there is A and B and I have A prime and whatever I am drawing here, we call B prime. So, A prime is same as A, B prime is same as B, but A is not same as in any group theory sense, A and B are distinct. Now, we come to SU 2. S u 2 story is a bit simpler and nicer, because S u 2 simply says take n cap and let theta go from 0 to 2 pi. And actually there is no harm including the 2 pi. Okay because when it reaches 2 pi, it becomes minus 1 in the group, in the group. So, regardless of which direction you reach that minus 1, it is minus 1. And in SU 2 case, the entire outer surface of the ball is one point, topologically one point, one and the same point.
and the surface theta equal to 2 pi with u of 2 pi regardless of whatever n cap is equal to minus 1 is entire is one point. So, now what happens is that the difference between S O 3 and S U 2 is that in S U 2 the range of parameter is double. Okay. If you take the standard choice n cap varying over the whole sphere, then you have to restrict theta to go from 0 to pi aside from all the fine print about what happens at the surface. So, but it goes 0 to pi, whereas in S u 2 it goes from 0 to 2 pi. And only when you reach 4 pi do you get, so if you, if you do this convention for S u 2 take only upper hemisphere, then you can go all the way to 4 pi and then you will return to minus to plus 1. That is expressed simply by saying that you can go to minus 1 from any of the directions. But the size of this or you can say there is a 2 to 1 mapping from S O 3 to S U 2. to 1 homomorphism from S u 2 into S o 3. Then we finally come to the most important topological property. Therefore, S u 2 is a simply connected space every single curve in S u 2 can be shrunk to a point, but in S o 3 you cannot. Whereas, S u 2 is simply connected, once it is simply connected, it is automatically connected. Connected means any two points can be joined okay, by a arc within the set, but it is not simply connected, which we will just check, which I will prove in a minute. Whereas, S u 2 we will find is simply connected. Now, remember the definition of simply connected is that every single closed curve can be shrunk to a point and not simply connected means there exist loops that cannot be shrunk to a point, but there will be an equivalence class of them. There will be a whole, so there basically they will fall into two equivalent classes in the case of S o 3. Either they can be uh, it one class which can all be shrunk to the origin the other class which cannot be shrunk to the origin. And the picturization goes as follows. If you take S u 2 which is easier to explain, think of one class of loops which are entirely inside. Okay. You can always shrink to a, this to a point, no big deal. Right. So, this can be shrunk to a point. Take another class of loops, which start somewhere in the interior, then reach the boundary, but now boundary is all one point. So, I can re enter through here. So, I go like this, 
remember actually this is a little bit confusing because <coughs> this is not a rotation, this is a sequence of many different rotations. So, we are in the space of all possible rotations, but there is a path in this space it goes here, I can re enter through this point. So, I can magically come out of that and re enter through here, because they are actually one and the same point and then I come and close the loop. Okay. Because the whole thing is minus 1, it is just minus 1. Therefore, I can continue by coming in from any other point, but these points are after all one and the same. So, there is no harm in slowly sequentially converting it into nothing stops me from doing this and finally, I make this. So, the path P 1 and path P 2. So, we can define a path P as a function of t such that well that is actually not the argument. The argument is that I can shift this point indefinitely to there, then it becomes a close. So, P of t such that P 1 can be smoothly drag to P 2. And once it reaches the once the outermost point reaches here, that has now become a closed loop. So, I can shrink it becomes of this class. So, I can shrink it to 0. So, every single point that every single closed curve you can imagine in this space is shrinkable to a point. But SO3 is not like that. Now, in this case, if I start like this, I reach let us say this point. Now, according to rule, if I want to continue. I can continue only from the antipodal point. I cannot re enter from any other arbitrary point. So, I can re enter through an antipodal point and then I continue come to the beginning point. So, of course, here also there are the trivial class of loops which are just in close like that but there is this class of loop which is a closed loop. Now, you can see that this cannot be shrunk to a point. The reason is that here when I shifted this point along the surface, I was just at sitting at minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 regardless where it appears in this 3 D in this uh, 2 D picture. But here the moment I try to shift this point, this point will also shift because the antipodal points are tied to each other. Okay. So, I cannot start shifting these two points close to each other. So, this class of curves remains unshrinkable. are unshrinkable. Actually, the it, if it refers to class then okay, is is class of unshrinkable points is the class of 
unshrinkable points uh, curves. So, there is it is like being in a on a torus or in an annular region, you take the x y plane, but you have cut out some uh, central disk or even just remove the origin, then you cannot close the loops to one point. There is one class of loops which do not go around the origin and the class of loops that goes around the origin. So, the same thing happens here <coughs> uh, and therefore, S O 3 and S U 2 are fundamentally different. First, we said that this is a double cover of this, but now what we know is that this set is simply connected. Such a so, if I embed this SO 3 inside this SU 2, then I have a double cover, but which is then simply connected. So, this is called a covering group. So, breaking the curve is not an option, that is not the then of course, you cannot do much topology. So, topology deals with the fact that you do continuous transformations and they deal with essentially with open sets eventually in some way or some sense you do always keep falling back on your intuition of the real line, where you have this dense uh, set of points which have the continuum, which form the continuum and even abstract spaces that do not necessarily have the sense of distance or magnitude that the real line has, the connectivity properties can be similar, which you can study by making a one to one map and that map is precisely what this map is, our page 1 expressions right. This is the map. So, this map maps the numbers n x, n y, n z and theta and this is because it is a unit vector there are 2 degrees of freedom here and 1 degree of freedom here. Three real independent real numbers mapped into this matrix which psychologically is representing a point in this abstract space. <coughs> 